Well, welcome to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. We're continuing to talk about the secret place and laying hold of the high call of heaven. We're living in exciting days. And now more than ever, we need to know how to walk worthy of the calling and be found faithful. I'm going to share a word today, and I'm going to give insight from Orr Roberts. I pray that his quotes uh, will bring clarity and depth and help you get a better understanding of what the Lord is trying to say today. And so we just come, Father, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I surrender, I yield, come and breathe through me, speak to your people, and let a call be stirred up, Father God, let the gifts be stirred up. Holy Spirit, we want to live a life of fire and boldness before you. Holy Spirit, fill each vessel to overflowing. And I thank you, Father God, that you would open our eyes to see, ears to hear. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, as you breathe on the word. We want revelation knowledge. We want to know you, Jesus. I thank you that the word says, Father God, that eternal life is to know you. And we want to know you, Father. We want to truly know you. And so we come and we present ourselves before you today. We go beyond the veil to that invitation, to that divine appointment with you. Speak to us and speak through us. Glorify the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen and Amen. Now, in Ephesians 4.1, it says, Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. So you have been called. There's a purpose in your life. You are anointed and appointed for such a time as this. I've often said to the Lord, I would rather, God, to have lived in a previous time. I enjoyed years ago. It was simpler. I feel like the world has grown up and I want off the ride. But God said to me, you were anointed and appointed for such a time as this. You are anointed to flourish. You are anointed at this time to be successful, to prosper, and to be a, a perfect voice for Him on this earth. And God expects of us to learn how to come into the secret place to hear His voice and to be obedient to Him. Now more than ever, you need to learn how to come beyond that veil and have that personal relationship with Him where you hear His voice. Or Robert said this, Your highest honor is to do what He has called you to do, not to be a clone of another. You're called to bear fruit, much fruit, and that that fruit would remain. There's so many people in this hour that are seeking to build clones. There's so many ministries that put people on a pedestal, and then you have to bark like them, quack like them, act like them. But God is looking for people, individuals, that will come beyond the veil and receive their call, their purpose. I believe in this hour, we will see people begin to step up doing some big things, small things, but faithful people being obedient before the Lord. And as they do, he will be truly glorified and his body will suddenly arise in boldness and power. Or Robert said this, God gets no glory out of us all being just alike. Each of us is unique and irreplaceable. You are called and that call that God has given you is without repentance. God has called you. There's something unique and wonderful because as you come beyond the veil and you have this divine appointment, God begins to pour into you different aspects of His glory that others don't have. And we need you. We need the revelation that you have. And as you look at this, in Ephesians 4, 16, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by that which every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. We've been told, just simply turn up and simply do what we tell you to do, and it will grow. But if we get a hold of what God's saying, where if we start functioning and flowing according to proper purpose, it will cause true growth. And this is the hour where he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And it's time for us to step up and begin to live boldly for him. Or Robert says this, but there is no possible way for us, for you to successfully do the same thing without first hearing God speak into your spirit, the clear word, the clear outline on how and when to do it, then receiving the clear open door to do it. That is what happens beyond the veil and that divine appointment. See, the secret place is that personal experience and encounter. That's not where you're in the crowd. Because many people like to hide in the crowd and do the crowd thing. And they 
operate and function based on what pleases the crowd. But God is looking for those that desire God, that say, God, I love you. I want to serve you. I'm going after you. And they get when no one's looking, when nobody's watching, when there's no glory in it in the natural. You don't get any brownie points. You don't get any points in any way. But rather, I'm here for you, Jesus. I'm here simply to surrender and yield. I love you, Jesus, and I love your people. And out of this, I come, and you can use me whatever way you want. I'm here, I'm available, and I surrender. In Ephesians 4, verses 2 and 3, with all humility and gentleness and patience, showing tolerance for one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. See, when you come in the secret place, you are found in the Spirit, in Him. And as you hear His Word, His Word begins to produce in you the fruit of the Spirit. It begins to do something bigger in you. In Psalm 105, verse 19, Until the time that His Word came to pass, the Word of the Lord tested Him. And the Word, the calling, the purpose that you receive behind the veil, and the secret place of His presence will begin to separate you. It will begin to prepare you. It will begin to challenge and begin to develop character in you for the call. We look at this in 2 Peter verses 1, sorry, in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4. For by these He has granted to us His precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world. His Word has life in it, and as it enters us, as we receive it and mix it with faith, it is implanted, and it begins to fill us, transfused to every fiber of our being, and it has the God-like, or it has, sorry, that DNA of the Father in it, and as a consequence, we become like Him, partakers of the divine nature. We begin to walk like Him, talk like Him, act like Him. We become true representatives of Him on the earth so that how we do it is correct. We're not here to build our kingdom. We're not here to build our name. We're not doing things based on us, but rather by Him. And in, in so, as we do it correctly, because we got our commissioning, we got our calling in the secret place beyond the veil, as a consequence, with it, as that word of destiny and purpose is spoken to us, as that vision that comes from heaven grows in us, it does something in us that changes us, and we become more like Him. We begin to act like Him, talk like Him, walk like Him, as I said. Or Robert said this, When I say God speaks into your spirit, I'm referring to you hearing His voice and lining it up with the Bible, the Word of God itself of seeing the invisible and feeling and knowing of faith inside yourself that you can do the impossible. Because in the secret place of His presence, the Holy Spirit comes and begins to open the Word. He begins to give you revelation. He is the teacher. He is the one to remind you. He is the one who reveals Jesus. He is the one who declares the Lordship of Jesus in your life. And God wants to do that in the secret place. As you personally pursue Him, as you come, and we discover in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, as we believe that He is, He is the rewarder of those that diligently seek Him behind the scenes, going after. The call, the strength of the call, the anointing of the call, the effectiveness of the call is based upon the life behind the scenes. Not your network, not your knowledge, not what people. It's about this relationship behind the scenes. If you're going to produce fruit that brings some glory, that one day you're going to be able to get a, a, a crown that you can lay at His feet and worship Him, then you must build it behind the veil, behind the scenes, in the secret place where you choose, when nobody's looking, where you're not getting brownie points, as I said, and say, God, I'm here for you. Revelations 3, 15 and 16. Listen to this. This is a warning given and a rebuke to the church of Laodicea. I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot or cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. What a thought. Here you have a church doing church things. Not bad things, but they don't have the fire of the secret place on them. They don't have the anointing that comes by paying the price to get to know Him. 
of going after him and pursuing him. They're not bad or evil. They look and appear good. And many people get busy doing church things and they run from the call or they fail to fall into the high call of heaven. This is not an hour to fall short. This is not an hour to do things because peer pressure tells us to do this. This is a time to fulfill the high call. And whatever that high call is for you right now, to do it. To be in season. To be at the right place at the right time. Doing what He's called you to do. It may be something small, and that's okay. Because God takes small things and makes them big. We always think big. God thinks obedience. And I want to encourage you to that place of obedience. Paul explained this in 1 Corinthians 12, 18. But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. I've heard that verse used to control, manipulate, and hold people. And I want you to understand something. The glorious thing about the Lord God is he always brings you to greater places of liberty. True spiritual leaders and fathers, they encourage and develop. They strengthen the call and they strengthen your liberty. You look at a good parent. A good parent raises up their children to be mature, to be uh, effective, and to be uh, responsible, to know and get a hold of something, a purpose, and to do it and have joy, and to be able to go out and be successful in life, and hopefully uh, to raise up the next generation. Instead of, we have parents, spiritual parents and spiritual leaders that are trying to get you to be duplicates of them, clones of them, to do it their way. And they want to hinder and kill the call. That's abuse. And God is not into that. God is looking for people, individuals, that will hear and listen and obey. Or Robert said this, You'll know you found your place in God when you fit your, like your hand in a glove. When as a minister, you become totally focused on spreading the gospel, which is the power of God, Romans 1, 16. Or when in another case, you are focused enough that you have a knowing you are in God's will. And there's a place where we step in and we begin to flow. And God calls us, if you read 1 Corinthians, that I just quoted, the context is function. And he's talking about the eye and he's talking about the ear. And they have function. And there's various components that make up the functioning of the eye and the ear. And God is looking for individuals. He's looking for those to step in according to function. And God puts you in the right church that flows with the function that what you're doing adds to uh, and, and multiplies. I believe in local church. And I believe that our callings should strengthen and add to the local church vision and calling. But that local church should add and strengthen the vision inside of you if you're in the right place if you're not walking in disobedience. God is looking for people that are surrendered, humbled, and yielded, not building their kingdom, not people of strife, but people of love, people that are surrendered and, as I said, yielded in the secret place of His presence. Uh, or Robert said this, knowing your place in God doesn't happen in one day. It requires time, experience, endurance, and obedience, and staying the course. But once you have it, you'll never give it up. And it takes, there's a price to be paid for the call of heaven. There's a price of daily going in and pressing in and going after. We always want instant. We're in an instant society. I like things instantly. And God speaks sometimes and he says things and it's now. But I often ask God, when you say now, is it now, now? Is it now, now, now? Or is it just now? Because God's now, uh, I've discovered, He's already working behind the scenes. Things are beginning to move, but the uh, appearance of it, the release date, hasn't yet come. And we've got to stay always in the now of heaven. Stay in that place where, as I said, we are yielded. So we're in the right place, uh, doing the right thing. Or Roberts went on to say this, Face up to God's command and provision for finding you your place in Him. You do not have to settle for second or third best. Double your efforts that you have been putting into your ministry, your career, and your life. With God, it's never too late. But you have to act when He speaks. As you begin, as I did, to see the invisible, follow it. Remember, these things which are seen are not made of things which do appear. And so God wants you to lay hold of in the secret place where you step into a new realm. You begin to walk by the Spirit. You begin to see things by the Spirit. And in this wonderful place, you begin to operate and act differently. 
Because in this place, as you step up and begin to be a spirit being under the anointing and flow of the Holy Spirit, under the wings of the Lord Almighty, this is the place where you can walk with dominion because you have authority because you're under authority. And it's His authority operating in your life because He trusts you and He's able to work through you because you are surrendered. Too many are building their own thing and God is looking, particularly in this hour, for those, the wheat, those that bend, those that, those that surrender, those that bring Him glory and not themselves. Roberts had two key points and that was the first one I just read and the second one, which is what I'm going to end with. To find your place in God, become absolutely committed to finding it and you will find yourself in it as gracefully as an eagle settles into her nest. You will find in the secret place of His presence that all of a sudden you will begin to step in as God directs your steps into various things and the purpose of God begins to come forth naturally. You'll begin to find that these things you never thought about, that you just started to do, you just felt the leading to do, all of a sudden a door opened and a ministry and a purpose came forth. Your ministry may be in the financial it may be in the marketplace. It may be in ministry. It may be in many places. But when you step in it, you bring God glory. It edifies, strengthens, and encourages the body of Christ. We need people in this hour, the church, stepping up, being people that are living boldly and living loudly for Jesus. Not arrogant, rude, but people that have had such an encounter and change in the secret place of His presence that now they live out there is an outflow in their lives of that secret place living. That time in the secret place and the change and transformation that occurs in them as they become so much like Him begins to manifest through them. And I believe that's what God is looking for. And you need to make every effort. You need to press in now more than ever. The key is not making your ministry happen, making the call of purpose come forth. The key is getting to know Him. The key is getting into the secret place and going after Him. Getting ears to hear, eyes to see, and a hearing heart. A place of surrender and just simply saying, here I am. That place of faithful obedience and being available. If you will do that on a day-to-day -day basis, you will find that God will begin to use you and step by step move you in to a purpose, and that you will start in your Jerusalem and He will continue to expand it and increase it. If you are found faithful in the small, He will move you up into the big things. Amen? Well, I pray this message blessed, encouraged, strengthened you, that the call on the inside of you is really begin to be stirred by the Holy Spirit, that you would truly go after Him in the secret place and recognize you were called, anointed, and appointed for such a time as this. I would ask, would you consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and maybe putting a comment, but don't believe this message. As you do so, you help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google. Because as you do so, we are able to reach more people. I want to see as many backsliders brought back, as many people stepping up and beginning to move again, once again, in their call. And so I thank you. I also ask, would you consider joining our prayer partnership team? As you do so, you are invited to our Zoom meetings, you get our newsletters, email newsletters, and you are asked to pray, to pray for us to have the message, and to pray for the impact of the message, and also to pray for our partners. And then realize this, you have partners all around the world available to pray for you at any moment, at any time as the Lord leads. I also believe that there will come a day where we will stand before the throne and there will be a reward given for the fruit that we produced. All the partners, I believe, will share in that reward, and that's priceless. Being a partner costs you nothing. You simply have to go to the website, robertpares.org, and go to the partner page and sign up. If you want to be a financial partner, great. We need those too. It takes finances to do the things of God, and we're working on books and other things. The videos cost money, and so I appreciate it. But most importantly, I believe in the importance and power of prayer, and that's primarily what I'm asking for. I want to know that we are praying for you and that you are loved, appreciated, and cherished.
and I would ask and encourage you, check out more in the series uh, about the secret place and fulfilling the high call of heaven. Uh, the other series, the secret place, and there's other series that we've done. May they encourage you, help you, enable you to live boldly, live strongly, uh, be equipped, encouraged to step forth and do all God has called you in these last days. They are perilous times, but they're exciting times. And remember, this is the day the Lord has made, regardless of what we see, hear, or think. And we rejoice in it, not because of things, but because of Him, through Him, and for Him. Amen. Look up, our Redeemer's drawing nigh, and may we be found faithful, occupying, being faithful and obedient to what He's called us to do, small or great, when He comes. Amen. Be blessed in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.